It's dark and sinister with a past that highlights the malevolent nature of mankind. No, it's not your internet browser history. Today we're taking photos in a secret nuclear underground bunker. But first, we need some film and cameras. Down in the bunker, we're talking tungsten light, so I'm going to take the painfully obvious choice, Ektar 100. Cine Steel 800. I'm not simple, of course I'm going to shoot this down here. If you've been living under a rock, then you won't know that Cine Steel 800 is a tungsten balance film with the remjet layer removed, so the highlights have these halations. It's like a cheat code to slap some big old vibes on your shitty, mediocre film photos. That can go through my M6 with the fastest lens I currently own, a Voigtlander Nocton 35mm 1.4. Also, this bunker is sort of a one-way deal. There's no doubling back to get shots. So I'm loading up two cameras and I'm shooting them side by side. It's like dual wield disappointment and I feel like mixing up the focal length a little bit so I'm going to slap a 50mm on my Canon A1 and in that I dropped a roll of Kodak T-Max P3200. Apparently this is an 800 ISO film but it loves taking a bloody good hiding at 3200 so I'm going to shoot it at box speed. I've also made the decision to take no tripod and no flash just to make things extra hard for me. The entrance to the bunker itself is actually disguised as a pretty normal looking if not slightly ugly house but underneath it lies a dark secret. It's it's a little bit like how on the outside you look like a completely normal human being but deep down you're actually a diabolical piece of shit. This building has an 18 inch reinforced roof and metal shutters so it's pretty solid. Unlike my film loading technique as you can tell by these light leaks. Once you go through the house you get to this 120 yard long tunnel which leads up to the blast doors of the bunker. Seriously I could blow through both rolls right here right now. There's something about these symmetrical seemingly endless compositions that I just really like. Maybe because they're easy. Just turn your brain off, square everything up, and you should come out of it with some sort of photo. This whole situation is made a little bit darker when you get down the end and notice there's a gunner's position. And the reason why it's so straight is because it's easier to mow down people trying to get into the bunker and survive a nuclear blast from above. I did get this quite nice photo of my missus though. Where's that gunner when you need him, am I right lads? <laughs> That's a horrible joke. Nice photo though. Anyway, I managed to fight the urge to just plow through 72 photos of this tunnel and push on. I've been here before, I know it gets better. At this point, you're probably wondering, Jack, how did you find this secret nuclear bunker? Well, it wasn't easy, I'll tell you that. First, I had to hack into the mainframe. Next, I gained entry posing as a government official. Once inside, I had to neutralize three armed guards. That was the easy bit. I just told them about this photo book I was planning and they all f***ing died of boredom. A lot of good men died to bring you this free YouTube video. Once you get through that tunnel, you get to the main staircase and an idea of the scale of this place. It's three floors of prime photo taking potential. Three floors of endless compositions which I will undoubtedly squander away. Some of it is closed off, like you want some of your secret nuclear bunker to remain a secret, right? But I heard a rumour that these closed off sections are actually storerooms filled with enough expands to completely crash the market. That's not true, don't go in there. For all the younger viewers out there, this little red thing is called a landline. It's a lot like a mobile, except you can't unplug it or watch TikTok on it. But what it does do is lead me quite nicely onto my next point. One of the coolest things about this place is that it's full of retro tech. Stuff that was cutting edge in the day, but now antiquated and obsolete. Sounds a lot like shooting film, doesn't it? But something about shooting all this old stuff on film just seems right. Even if I don't have a clue what it does. Like this thing. Someone please explain to me what this does. Because as far as I can guess, it's got a toilet roll dispenser on top, so you don't even have to get up from writing a really long email. This radio room was quite interesting. This is where the BBC would have broadcast the ink spots I don't want to set the world on fire on repeat so that all the apocalypse survivors above would have something to listen to as they mauled each other to death over the last tin of tuna. I quite like these images. The murkiness through the security glass, the dials and switches glowing in the background, the mannequin that seems to be wearing Margaret Thatcher's face. That really sort of gives it this uncanny valley edge. This is the plotting floor. Bombs dropped would have been marked on this clear perspex, a little bit like a much less fun version of the game Battleships. It's also where I started to regret my choice in lenses. I mean, yeah, the Voigtlander is brilliant for getting the light on the film that I need. This bunker is very tight and confined. I could have done with something super wide down here, like your mum or a 15mm lens to really do this place justice. This is the air filtration plant. Definitely a necessity, not only to scrub off that radiation, but I guess living down here long enough, you're eventually just going to end up breathing each other's farts. T-Max was also doing bits down here. I do feel like there was the odd occasion where it just said, f*** it, that will do, with the shadow detail, but to be honest, that's probably more human error and my metering more than anything. Part of me would like to shoot this film at 1600 or 800 ISO and just see what it does, but at box speed, it's making things real easy for me down here at them higher apertures. 
For me, this is the crowning jewel in the bunker's radiation suit. This room would have been full of people playing winner stays on Pong tournaments, and in between that, running separate departments to try and govern the masses of wasteland mutants that were once the British public above. I don't think this is exactly the equipment they would have had down here at the time, but seeing this many old computers in one place makes for one hell of a photo opportunity. I did find this room a bit of a pain of the arse to expose, if I'm honest. You got these powerful lamps that create these sudden, harsh shadows. Exposing for the light on the computers individually just annihilated the background. So then you have this item that's just floating out of context in space. Not a fan. I probably could have gone about this differently and only have myself to blame. Much like all of the issues in my life. This, however, is one of my favourite photos I got down here. The emptiness of it sort of just gives me the willies. And I actually took this photo twice. The second time round, I pulled one of the chairs out to give the photo a subject and some sort of story. Maybe the guy that was posted here got up to take a piss and didn't put his chair back. Yeah, I said a story, not a compelling story. This is the sick bay, probably where I would have been stationed because, you know, I'm pretty f***ing sick myself. I think the faint smell of expired medical supplies, the mannequins which I can only assume come alive at night and perform horrific surgeries on each other, and the fact that the facial recognition on my camera was going absolutely wild for no reason at all, really meant that this infirmary was giving me heebie-jeebies big time. I wasn't too shook that I wasn't able to squeeze out this photo though. This photo is very boring, but there's something about it which I just really like. Maybe it's the way that Cine still handled it, maybe it's that 60 70s aesthetic with the metal framed bed and the lockers behind it. Or maybe it's the lightly shat pillow. Who knows? Kelvin Hatch Bunker is actually privately owned by one family. Given society's current trajectory, having your own personal bunker seems like a good shout to me. After the Allied forces dropped the Fat Man and Little Boy bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima at the end of everyone's least favourite sequel, governments understandably got a little bit sketchy in case the same thing happened again. So all around the country they decided to build these bunkers. In 52 they requisitioned 25 acres of land from the Parrish family, bulldozed a hill and replaced it with this bunker. The purpose of the bunker changed over the years, but its main purpose was to act as a new home for government if shit really started popping off. At the end of the Cold War, the whole thing was decommissioned and the Parrish family bought it back. Nowadays, it's open to the public and is available for hire as a film set. As you can see, there's been a whole number of famous faces coming through here and filming various different things. At least I'm assuming this is an actor and not the real Adolf Hitler. So, what did we learn from this photo mission? Well, Cine still f***ing slaps, but we sort of knew that already. If you're looking for a high-speed black and white film, then you can't go wrong with loading up a roll of this P30 200 and if you're in the area you should definitely go and visit this place the parish family have done a great job at preserving this part of history it's a bit of history we shouldn't forget and the idea of having to slum it down in one of these bunkers really does put the fear in you so let's be nice to everyone even if they only shoot digital <laughs>